by the time we are done with this discussion, uh, at least you should be able to explain the fundamental uh, divisions of a mechanism description. And you should also be able to write uh, your own description about a particular uh, mechanism. Technical descriptions must always take into account the audience, the purpose, and the method of organization. In our previous session, we highlighted the need for a definition in any description that you are going to engage in because that forms the basis for what else uh, follows. Now, the purpose of a description is to define a new product, a new set of skills, maybe new tools, uh, new operations, uh, experiments, uh, tests, or even uh, job skills or how to give instructions, assembling equipment, uh, etc. That is uh, the purpose of a description. Now, there are different types of uh, descriptions, and uh, each one of them uh, will be uh, conducted according to the goal or the purpose of the writer. The first and most common way of writing a description is uh, using the spatial method. That is the order in which the parts are seen if they are considered from top to bottom or from bottom to top or outside to inside or any other arrangement which is uh, logical to the device or mechanism we are looking at. And then you also have the functional order. That is the order in which the parts would be used or encountered by the user. And then you have the chronological order. Uh, that is the order in which the parts would be assembled or disassembled. Uh, this is often accompanied by uh, exploded uh, diagrams of uh, the parts. Take note of these three uh, ways in which uh, descriptions or mechanism descriptions uh, normally appear. The description of a mechanism itself should be structured in a particular way. And it may be simple or complex, it may be large or small, but the principle of the description itself is always the same. And the fundamental uh, divisions of a description are as follows. You have the introduction, you have the part-by-part -part description, and then you have the conclusion. So the introduction, this is where the reader needs to know three kinds of information about uh, the mechanism. So first of all, what is the mechanism? Define it. Number two, what is its purpose? That is the function or the use of the mechanism. Number three, what does it look like? That is the appearance of the mechanism. So the reader needs a visual image of the mechanism. And uh, you as a writer, you should provide a picture or a drawing of the mechanism. The last item in the introduction is you should give the principal parts of the mechanism in the order in which you are going to discuss them. And this gives uh, some kind of organization to the discussion. So that's what an introduction to a mechanism uh, will be composed of. And then the second part we identified is the part by part uh, description. So, as we mentioned in the introduction, the mechanism uh, is divided into the principal parts, or at least the parts are mentioned in the introduction. But in the part-by-part -part description, each part now must be introduced to the reader and treated as an object on its own. The general procedure for the part-by-part -part, uh, description is as follows. You state the purpose of the part, and you indicate the general appearance of the part, and then subdivide the part into subparts if it has any parts. And then what do we do with the subparts? The same thing that you do with the original part. State it, uh, its purpose, indicate a general appearance, and also subdivide it into sub subparts if there are any. And then give a detailed description of that part the shape, the size, the relationship to other parts, the method of attachment, the material, and finish. Depending on the complexity of the mechanism you are describing, you will have to do this for 
each and every part that is on that particular mechanism. In the conclusion, which is the third part of the description, you are going to talk about how the mechanism works or how the mechanism is used. So, for example, after you discuss the different parts of a car, in the conclusion, you are going to show the reader now how these parts come together so that the car can move 